Ordinary People. I'm Ginny Metherill and I'm a fourth generation witch. So we're back with my ever popular almanac series looking at all the witchcraft trends, traditions and rituals that you can do in the month of August. So as always with these videos, what I like to do is to give you a general overview of the witchcraft trends that run throughout the month of August. And then, as ever, we'll get into the nitty gritty day to day detail of what witchcraft you can do when and why on which day. So with that said, let's look at our overview. Now, as you can see, I'm sitting outside today in the beautiful sunshine. My garden is looking glorious and all is right with the world. But August is the first month of autumn. Now, this is to do with the world's energy. The energy for May, June and July is a very much a growing out energy, a reaching outwards. And for August, September and October, the energy is more settling, fattening, ripening. And this can be reflected in all of your witchcraft. It's a time for gratitude, a time for harvest, a time for gathering in. Not just the fruits of the season, but gathering in all that you will need, be it herbal energies, be it gathering friends around you, putting in place the supports that you need for the upcoming darker months. August is again named for a Roman emperor. This is Augustus Caesar, not the Julius Caesar of July. Augustus Caesar was very jealous, I think, of Julius Caesar and wanted to have a month named after himself too. And that's why he came up with August. However, August is considered a very royal and exalted month. It always has been. It's almost like the high point of the summer year. Babies born in August are always considered to do very well with their lives. It is also a month of sacrifice. So this is all bound up with the idea that when you harvest the grain, you're sacrificing John Barleycorn or the god Lou or the Mother Earth herself. And so as a result, August was traditionally always held as the month for human sacrifice. You know, of course, this is not something that anybody can possibly agree with. Although sometimes I quite like to sacrifice my husband. I think we got divorced three times last week. He's been most annoying. A human sacrifice also brings with it a lot of malevolent spirits. And in order to ward off those malevolent spirits, you should make sacrifice of loaves because this is the month of the grain harvest. So a loaf of bread quartered and put around each corner of your house will protect you from malevolent energies and bad fairies. That is a very old tradition. It's also bound up with the covenant of custom. This is one of the months where it is really important to make sacrifice, to make offerings to the fairies in order to appease them and so that they will continue to fill your house with the fruits of the season. However you like to celebrate your August holidays, they do have an easy feel to them, don't they, these days? The hot days of August are here for us and our pleasure. As they say, I'm as happy as Larry because this is literally what I live for, the heat, the gloriousness of the UK countryside and just the wonderfulness of summer. Let's get on to the nitty gritty day to day detail. And we're actually going to start, of course, with the 1st of August. And you all know that the 1st of August is Lunasa or Lammas. I've actually done a video on this. So if you want to go and watch it, I'll put it up here for you and have a look at it because it tells you all about Lunasa, its customs, its traditions and its spells. In fact, I've done several of them. So go and have a look at all of those. So I'm not going to talk about too much about Lammas here, apart from don't forget that this is a day that the Fae start really coming into the fore. They're going to be dancing in the fields at the moment and playing their pipes and sounding like the cricket chorus that is also coming into effect. And so do leave a small offering to the Fae to keep them appeased. The 2nd of August is the anniversary of the death of King William Rufus of the UK. Now, this was a notoriously evil king, and although it was considered a hunting accident, many people of the time actually believed he was made into a sacrifice for the old gods for this time of year at Lunasa. 
The 4th of August is the night of the new moon. This new moon is in Leo and astrologers believe that each new moon takes on certain aspects of the zodiac sign that it appears in. Leo is all about courage and inner strength, energy and pleasantries. So this is a perfect time to make plans to bring to the fore the fun and games that you've got in your life and also to use that hardcore courage of your soul to face any difficult times head on because you'll get a great benefit from it. You will find that those difficult situations will have melted away by the time of the full moon. The 2nd of August is also the day that you should traditionally gather fever few and mustard seed. Mustard seed is excellent for clarifying the blood and fever few is almost a panacea for all sorts of lung complaints. In fact my mother always used to give me fever few tea for a headache. Um, I've got some growing in the garden here and it is such a beautiful plant that I can't bear to pick it. However, this is the day to do so. Now those of you in the coastal cities will love this date because the 5th of August is the traditional start of the oyster season. And you should eat oysters on this day because then you will guarantee your fortune for the forthcoming year. I personally can't eat oysters because they'll kill me. However, if I did eat them and they killed me, I suppose my fortune would be guaranteed in the fact that I wouldn't need it. The 1st to the 7th, which is the first week, obviously, of August, is a weather divination week. If this week is dry and fair, then a really harsh winter is going to come. And should it be dry and fair, then you need to count all the fogs that happen throughout the month of August, because that will tell you how many snowfalls there will be during the winter. The 11th of August is Old Lammas Day. Now, this is not the start of a festival, but the end of it. This is the time when your trial marriage would end. So it started on the 1st and it finishes on the 11th. And should you decide to carry forward with this wedding, you can then get married on the 12th. However, this date is also quite an uncanny time of year. It's one of the times of the year when the veil is not at its thinnest, but quite thin. And so the spirits are abroad. You should carry square crosses made of rowan wood around with you to protect against these malevolent spirits and make sure you're safe from evil. You can also place the square crosses above your doorways and windows. However, you must do this completely in silence. Should you speak to anyone whilst you're making your square cross and placing them above your doorways, the charm will be broken and won't work. So, the 13th is the Feast of St Cassian. Now, the reason I mention it here is because it's quite an anti-pagan day this day. St Cassian is the patron saint of school teachers, and on this day he was murdered by his pagan pupils who stabbed him to death with their pen nibs because he was so harsh and so strict with them they couldn't take it anymore and they snapped. And so it is considered a little bit of an unlucky day. So don't go around being too strict with your children on this day because they might stab you with their pens. 12th to the 13th is the best days of August to see the Perseids meet your showers. This is my favourite shower of the year. They're long and bright and fireballs and trails and they go on for a good week or so. And what do you do if you see a shooting star? Well, of course, you make a wish. And remember what I always say, wish magic is inherently selfish. You can't wish for anybody else. You have to wish for yourself. And these showers will be very visible because we're in a semi-dark sky with the moon only quarter full. The 15th is a traditional day to make the charm a bannock. Now I'm going to tell you about this. This is a particularly Scottish charm, but it's to do with the season. You should cut some corn or grain by hand and husk it by hand, grind it by hand, and then knead it into a dough by hand, but do it on a rowan wood board. Toast it on a campfire made of rowan wood. Then when it is done, take it out and cut it into four pieces. Each of you from eldest to youngest that live in your household must take a bite from one of the four pieces. And then when everybody has had the bite, you can walk sunwise, which is clockwise, as opposed to Widdershins, which is anti-clockwise. Whole family must walk sunwise around the fire. When the fire has died down, you take the embers and scatter them across your fields because this creates a charm of fertility and fortune. The four pieces of bread that you haven't quite finished, you place in the four corners of your house. This will be an offering to the shining ones or the good folk and ensure that the fortune is kept within your house. 
The 20th is a day for you astronomers out there because Saturn is occulted by the moon, meaning that Saturn goes behind the moon and we can't see it. We can't see it for about 50 minutes. What this means is that if you have Saturn high in your birth charts or you're ruled by Saturn or Saturn features prominently in your astrological signs and in, in your astrological charts, then this is like a reset button. Essentially, the way it works is that your energy for Saturn is blocked by the moon. And so therefore you have to wait until Saturn then comes out of the moon, whereupon you can start again in your cycle. 26th of August is traditionally the last day that you should collect honey of the summer from your beehives. Bumblebee charms are also very effective at this time of year because bumblebees bring luck and fertility and all the great and sweet things in life to you. 23rd of August is when the sun enters the house of Virgo. And as ever, I'm going to read to you from my calendar of shepherds to, to tell you what the Virgo male is like and the Virgo female. They're often quite harsh about the female, but let's have a look. The man born under Virgo shall be a good householder, ingenious and solicitous to his work, shamefast and of great courage. He will soon be angry. However, scarcely shall he be a while with his first wife. He shall be imperiled by water and he shall have a wound with iron and shall live 70 years. The woman shall be shamefast, ingenious and painstaking. Oh, she's got quite a good rap this time, the woman. She ought to be wed at 12 years. <laughs> That's quite young, isn't it? But she will not be long with her first husband. Her life shall be sometime in peril. She shall have dolor at 10 years. Dolor is an old fashioned word for uh, perils. And if she escapes, she shall live 70. She shall bring forth virtuous fruit and everything shall favor her. Men and women will both suffer many temptations, but shall delight to live in charity but they will suffer much, whatever it may be. Now, the Shepherd's Queen's quite keen on Virgos. I reckon that the calendar of Shepherd's writer was probably a Virgo. The 26th of August is the night of the full moon. This full moon is, of course, called the Grain Moon or the old-fashioned Anglo-Saxon Lynx Moon. Lynxes went extinct in the UK in about 700 AD, but before then they would have been a fairly common sight at night, especially in August, because this is when the cubs come out of their nest and start exploring the outside world. Hence why it's the lynx moon. The 27th is the season to gather your wild poppies. Now this is a bit of a conundrum because wild poppies, if you gather them, you will bring storms to your life. If you stare too long at your poppies whilst you're gathering them, you'll go blind. So just look at them very briefly and then cut them down. Finally, we come to the 31st of August. This is nothing to do with paganism, witchcraft or anything, but I love the story of it, so I'm going to share it with you. It is the day when Noah in his ark opens the window and the dove that he released to find land flies back to him with an olive branch within its beak. That's rather nice, the world being saved on the 31st of August. So that is my almanac. Let me know what you think in the comments below. August, I have to say, is a firm favourite with me. I will spend most of it down by the river swimming. And if you want to learn any more about witchcraft, go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherall. There's details on there as well about my upcoming witchcraft retreats, which you can book. Because it's August, I am actually out of action for a couple of weeks. I won't be posting very much because I'm having a little break so I can spend some time arguing with my children, which is what I seem to do every August. Good fun it will be too. So I shall see you in a couple of weeks. <laughs>